Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Anglesey Abbey, um, which is a stately home maintained by the National Trust in Cambridgeshire in England. And this is just a video really about this place. I visited it recently and uh, I just thought I'd uh, share my thoughts on it. Now Anglesey Abbey was originally a hospital founded in the 12th century in the reign of Henry I. It soon became a Augustinian priory but this didn't survive the dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII in 1536 and it was left in ruins. Eventually uh, a house was built uh, incorporating some of these ruins uh, but it wasn't till 1926 that the house uh, became what it is today and that was down to Lord Fairhaven um, whom bought the house with his brother in, uh, in 1926 as a place uh, to live as it was near their uh, race horses and uh, new market they were heavily into that horse racing scene and uh, it's a place where uh, Lord Fairhaven could exhibit his and his uh, family's, particularly his mother's, collection of various artworks and objets d'art. Now, who was Lord Fairhaven? Well, he was, his real name was Urban Huttleston Rogers Broughton. And uh, he inherited a fortune. His grandfather was an incredibly wealthy uh, American tycoon. Indeed, he was one of the richest men in the world at that time. And then his father married into an English uh, family who were incredibly wealthy as well. And uh, Lord Fairhaven's father was eventually awarded a peerage, uh, which he didn't receive as he died, so it went to his son. Lord Fairhaven was apparently a rather shy and retiring character. He uh, was very friendly with the Queen Mother. She came to stay, apparently, and, um, and he died rather unexpectedly in 1966. And then the, um, the property was taken over by the National Trust. Apparently, he was a real stickler for rules and routine, which we'll hear about as we go through the house. Now the outside of the house is very beautiful, this sandy coloured stone and looks very Jacobean, um, late Elizabethan Jacobean. Um, and this was at the house Fairhaven inherited, although he, he did alter it. And it has the rather uh, lovely porch with um, a coat of arms on the top and uh, these pointy gables in the, in the roof. Uh, with a rather nice oriel window on the left hand side as you face the main aspect of the house. You actually enter the house from uh, behind. The house is kind of L shaped I suppose. You have the main section and then a bit uh, running uh, perpendicular. On the exterior just before, just what next to you go in there's this beautiful kind of splayed out pear tree and it's really lovely. As you go into this rather charming uh, entrance way, very small and unassuming, um, you come into the long gallery which runs the spine of the main range of the house. And this long corridor really has uh, is, is a taster for the eclectic tastes of Lord Fairhaven. Uh, there's clocks, a recurrent theme in this house. Military items, um, shields, helmets, spears, um, a bust of Oliver Cromwell, I think you see him once or twice, tapestries as well. It's quite a lovely um, space actually, quite intimate really but quite, quite lovely to walk up and down in. And the ceiling is um, vaulted, which um, which is um, a, a nod to the a dining room, which we'll come on to in a, in a minute. Um, off of this long gallery are a couple of 
uh, rooms. The first is the living room, which is just stuffed full of curios. Um, we have a, a beautiful fireplace, um, which looks Elizabethan. Um, you have, um, again, lots of clocks, a statue of St. Jerome, which is rather striking. And that's another theme. There's a lot of religious um, statuary and, uh, and paraphernalia, particularly Catholic um, crucifixes, um, statues of Our Lady, etc. That's another theme throughout the house. Um, perhaps pride of place in this room is the pagoda clock, which is this beautiful chinoiserie creation. I didn't see it work, but you can, there's a YouTube video of it working, and uh, you know the chimes uh, come when these pineapples rotate. It's a very beautiful uh, piece, uh, worthy of uh, worthy of a close look. There must be hundreds of clocks in this place. There's a lovely uh, porch here as well, which um, which leads out onto the front garden. Um, this lovely four centered arched. Uh, door and um, this uh, beautiful um, and very memorable Italian screen made out of a metal chain and ceramic flowers and then you go back out to the long corridor and then there's another room which is called the oak room again in here there's a beautiful uh, fireplace um, lovely landscape paintings as well. There are paintings throughout the house by masters such as Claude Lorraine, Constable and others. In the oak room you're, you're struck by the ceiling. It's a mock Jacobean plaster ceiling. Very impressive. Um, a reproduction but no, nevertheless very impressive. I think it's got Fairhaven's uh, coats of arms on there. There's oak panelling around the room as well, as well as some more chinoiserie uh, ornaments. You then go back to the long gallery and you go up um, a flight of stairs with the statue of Our Lady Mary just at the foot of the stairs, just off the side. The stairs were put in by Lord Fairhaven. He made numerous alterations to the house. Um, and the person he hired was um, a guy called Sidney Parvin. On the top of the stairs you come to this gallery with these, uh, these lovely paintings of birds. That's another theme of the house, birds or paintings of birds all over the place. We then come to a suite of bedrooms with a, a corridor running along them, which is I think called the New Market Corridor which is full of nude paintings, um, particularly by William Etty. Obviously of a very high quality, uh, if you look at them, they're, they're beautiful paintings, and uh, obviously a favourite artist of Lord Fairhaven, because there's, there's dozens of them. And here um, are Lord Fairhaven's uh, bedroom, um, his brother's bedroom whilst he lived in the house before his brother got married. Um, bedroom where the Queen Mother stayed, um, as well as adjoining uh, bathrooms and toilets, etc. Rather good fun to take a stroll through. Um, antiques. The beds themselves are beautifully upholstered. With, there's one room in particular, if it looks particularly modern. Um, patterns on the on the covers and the, the pillows um, quite striking after this you walk down another corridor hung with tapestries and with plenty of adjoining smaller rooms including uh, Fairhaven's wardrobe you see some of his military clothes he was in the, uh, he served in World War one with his brother The library is a really impressive space, um, built in 1937 by Sidney Parvin. It's a room that looks bigger than it actually is because of these, these big mirrors either side. 
when you walk in you initially think wow this is huge but actually it isn't as big as you think it is and that's a very clever illusion there's a a great constable uh, displayed there although sadly it wasn't on display when I was there so I'm gonna have to go back and uh, see that another time um, but um, the library houses a renowned collection of books which um, which I'd like to go back and perhaps look at a little more closely but it's a wonderful space Lord Fairhaven's favorite desk is there by that boreal window you see on the outside of the space. Another fireplace with these marble pillars either side. It's here that um, guests would have um, cocktails before dinner. Apparently a guest would have to leave at 8 to get to the dining hall for 8.03. He was a real stickler for routine and procedure, um, Lord Fairhaven apparently. But yeah, the, the library is definitely a highlight um, of this of this house and eventually you get to the the top of the stairs with these grand toilets <laughs> it's really and the grand marble urinals in them you go down the stairs and um, you're on your way to the dining room um, and the on the way to the dining room there's this another kind of gallery area a, a long area and there there's this display case just filled with these beautifully ornate crosses um, made out of gold, silver, encrusted with uh, precious jewels. Uh, that's well worth looking at. Again, more religious statues, uh, landscapes, uh, tapestries, etc. Uh, we then come to the dining room, which is an impressive room, um, as it's it's from the original priory, the, the medieval priory. It's the only thing that really exists from that time. I think there might be odd bits of masonry here and there, but that's this is the only survival from uh, the actual priory buildings. Um, it's got an impressive vaulted roof with these pillars. Um, it looks a bit like a crypt to a church, I suppose. The dining table itself is quite small, but apparently Lord Fairhaven didn't like to have too many guests uh, to eat with, and uh, everything was served with a great deal of, uh, uh, of order and punctuality, apparently. Remember, they, they had to be here uh, uh, three minutes after their drinks in the library. There are various um, servants, corridors and, um, and kitchens, etc. after this, uh, which you can, you can wander through before you, you come out the other side. And then you can walk around the extensive grounds. There's loads of statues um, to explore from other stately homes of the past. Plenty of tree-lined avenues and um, little nooks and crannies where you might find, you know, beautiful ancient trees and plants, etc. There's a water mill on the edge of the estate by a river as well, not surprisingly, <laughs> uh, which, um, which still works to this day. It wasn't working when I visited, although I have seen it in operation in a previous visit. And there's not much to say about that. The present building, I think, is from the 18th century, uh, although there was a mill there from the 1600s, I believe. But uh, that's well worth sticking your head in and having a look around the machinery and seeing these big millstones and all the big cogs, etc. Um, yeah, so Anglesey Abbey, it's definitely worth a visit, particularly on a beautiful sunny spring day when I went. Um, it's a handsome house full of character, full of exquisite and uh, charming antiques and paintings and tapestries, clocks to admire, an impressive library. And uh, as with all these places, it's quite interesting to find out about the, uh, the family who lived there. In this case, really, a man, Lord Fairhaven. The grounds are beautiful and uh, yeah, Anglesey Abbey, um, yeah, check it out if you're in the UK, uh, in the south southeast. Uh, a good day out. Thanks for watching. Bye.